it's a privilege to, to be given this opportunity to talk about the past and at such length, though I will attempt to, to, to stick within bounds and, and to stick to the timetable. It's an unusual opportunity as well, because the past, although we pay lip service to it, and in fact we do actually deeply value it, rarely reaches the top of any agenda. So this, from my perspective, as the County Heritage Officer, is a special moment. And I thank you for the opportunity to tell you about something of where Somerset came from. On the 1st of April, 1974, All Fools' Day, a muffled Court of Appeal of Somerset surprise minor was rung from the tower of St. Mary's Church in Yatton, which you see there. By that gesture, the end of Somerset, as it had existed for over a thousand years, was defiantly marked, and Somerset lost 18% of its northern territory to the new and rather unloved county of Avon. Avon survived until 1996, when the two new unitaries of Baines and North Somerset were created in its place. It's sobering to reflect what ended on that day in 1974. For as I've said before uh, in other forums, uh, Somerset, as it existed to that date, was older than England itself and older than any state of mainland Europe. That may sound too extreme or striking a statement to be um, satisfactorily true, but it is, it is in fact true. Somerset, on the 30, 31st of March 1974, was older than England older than any state of mainland Europe. Of course, Somerset, as an idea, as an entity, um, <coughs> wasn't always there, but the landscape was. And as we dig deeper into that landscape, and increasingly now, the past crowds in on us. We find the lineaments of the past uh, buried in the earth, and with modern techniques, we are finding more and more of it. Here are some of the earlier explorers, exactly 100 years ago at Norton Fitzwarren, discovering uh, a Middle Bronze Age a bank and ditch uh, at the hill fort there. And here is a Bronze Age gold hoard from Charterhouse on Mendip, which was discovered only two years ago. The largest Bronze Age gold hoard uh, ever uncovered uh, in Somerset, and now uh, preserved by the County Museum Service. It was placed there in the ground as a votive offering, it was originally scrunched up in a ball, and the man who found it painstakingly took it apart after 3,000 years before he brought it into the museum. So we never know what it looked like in the ground for 3,000 years. <laughs> but almost certainly, it was placed there as a reflection of what people thought about uh, earth and air and gods and spirits. It was placed there because of what people conceived of uh, as the nature of existence. We tend to have a view that we stand on some grand Whiggish trajectory of continuous improvement. Um, indeed, continuous improvement is one of the things uh, that we commit ourselves to in local government. And yet, it's never been like that. There have been times of great sophistication in the past, times of, uh, of the contrary too. And we, as it were, are just one blip on a graph that goes on and on in its curious way. If we'd gone down to Lohan in the middle of the 4th century, we would have found an extremely complex and lavish villa structure built by a Romanized Britain with this Roman pavement, now preserved again in the County Museum. Uh, it is uh, the telling of a story from Virgil. I don't know how often Virgil is read these days in Lohan, probably not, not very much, certainly not in the original. But here is the largest and earliest uh, uh, example of narrative art in the history of the British arts, the story of Dido and Aeneas, miraculously preserved in the tesserae of that Roman paper. And here, the sign of a society that was beginning to break down when crisis <coughs> arrived, when wealth was buried in the ground in hopes for better times for a return to the old order, to the way things had always been, and must surely be again, they must have thought, the Shapwick um, coin hoard, over 9,000 Roman denarii, uh, one of the largest coin hoards ever found uh, in the Roman Empire. 
So let us not think that we stand at the end of some grand uh, trajectory of progress which inevitably marches onwards. There have been um, crises, catastrophes, new beginnings uh, all along the, the line of Somerset's history. And as I say, we're still digging it up. Here they are digging up the Roman villa at Dinnington a couple of years ago. And Roman villas are appearing in great quantity in what has been uh, rightly called the Valley of the Villas in South Somerset, um, somewhere between uh, Ilchester and Ilminster. And I've no doubt that a great deal more will be found to provide us with a fuller picture of that rich and complex past, which too often we have scarcely sought to understand in the decisions we make. The Romans left in their time of crisis, 410 AD is the date that's normally given, and then we enter that period called the Dark Ages, where very little material evidence survives, and all we can grasp, apart from those few tangible fragments of the past, are, are the legends which arose and which stayed with us still, and which are so important in shaping what we think of as Somerset. Camelot and Arthur uh, and, and legends of that sort. And here's South Cadbury, uh, an Iron Age hill fort which was re-fortified during that Dark Age period, which had a great timber hall on top and palisades which uh, used 20,000 meters of timber. Again, although it was a Dark Age, it wasn't an age without resources, without ambition, without sophistication and, and without vision. None of that could have been possible without a sense of who we are and where we're going. But it was the Saxons, preeminently, and those immediately preceding them, who gave us the Somerset that we have inherited. And it's remarkable uh, the lineaments of continuity which bind us to that very distant past. And the beginning of that new phase, that new story, that new beginning, could be perhaps placed in the 5th and 6th centuries, when Celtic missionary saints um, set sail mostly from Wales, from Pembrokeshire and places like that, and landed on the West Somerset coast, attempting to evangelize the barbarous inhabitants and bring them to a knowledge and belief in the Christian God. I've heard someone say it's still the same. <laughs> um, I couldn't possibly not. <laughs> Those missionaries have left behind them very few traces, but in some cases they've left their names. St. Colburn at Colburn, uh, St. Petrock at Porlock, St. Decuman at Watchet. Poor old St. Decuman arrived sailing on his altar, uh, waste not, want not. He arrived on the West Somerset coast where the natives immediately decapitated him. <laughs> but St. Decuman merely put his head under his arm and continued to preach. <laughs> and if you go into St. Decuman's church at Watchet, you will still see the later medieval sculpture which depicts St. Decuman with his head under his arm. Next. <coughs> and there is Colborne Church, probably containing Saxon, uh, Saxon work, probably founded by one of those Celtic missionary saints. Uh, and reputedly the smallest parish church in England. 